Hi Flosstube, I'm Lori and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. Today is Tuesday, March 1st. It is approximately 9.20 in the morning. It's an overcast day in New Jersey. We're supposed to reach the high 40s and no precipitation in the forecast for now. Um, welcome, I'm so glad to be with you. Um, all my friends that come back every time I put a video for your awesome comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's always so much fun. You give me the desire to want to continue um, sharing my stitching with you. So thank you. Um, you must be wondering what the sequence is all about. Well, four years ago in March, I started my floss too. So I'm so excited. Um, that I'm still here, that I have, haven't have decided to stop, and that I've made so many friends through my Floss Tube channel. So thank you. Did I say thank you? Anybody new to my channel, welcome. You're always welcome here. Um, I have the best viewers um, that make some awesome comments, and I hope um, I can live up to them. Okay. Um, updates and questions first and then I'll go into my finishes and my haul and the reason I'm doing haul early in in this little video is because I need the space I have a little one of those snack trays I brought up from the basement um, wiped it down put it here because I'm running out of space to put things and this is a good room to videotape because of the lighting so uh, I don't want to drag everything downstairs and worry about lighting and because I have a bigger table. So um, I'm trying to do the best that I can. So, okay. Um, I'm going to have quilting at the end, but there was a question, well, not a question, but a comment. I had shown the disappearing, no, the magic four patch that was from the sewing studio video. And somebody said, oh, that's called the disappearing four patch. So I went and watched uh, a few other um, quilter videos and they called it disappearing and they cut it different ways and they came up with different patterns so that was a lot of fun I misspoke in the last uh, video on one of my finishes and I misspoke because I wrote it incorrectly um, I had to change the back of the frame the information um, because I had said that Lantern Lane was by a different designer and it's actually from a Little House Needleworks design so I had to change that information on a few things. And thank you, Kim, for catching that and telling me. Um, we were supposed to have a uh, meetup at Needleworkers last, it seems like so far away, last Saturday. Um, and then the next day we were gonna go to James's house and um, celebrate a half year birthday with Frigiana. She's six months old now. And um, my in-laws were coming out to have brunch with us so but there was a little mix up and they had to come on Saturday they couldn't make it on Sunday so I didn't get a chance to go to needleworkers um, but I did get there uh, during the week I picked up a fabric that they dyed for me my long lost pattern that finally came in which I'll show you in uh, my haul and um, and that's it um, somebody had asked me and um, I, I, I had put it on, but I forget to talk about it. If I, this was a, a Pandora bracelet. It is. Um, my son actually started it for me mm, a couple of years, a couple of years ago. He gave me one, the bracelet with um, like a globe that had, I'm sure they're not diamonds, but some kind of crystals um, on it. And he gave me that, um, I think it was Christmas one year. And then when he got married, he gave me the one, the heart that says mother on one side and on the other side it says son. And then um, I purchased Mickey and Minnie because I love Disney World, Disney um, Magic Kingdom. What's it called in Florida? Magic Kingdom and Disney World in California. I've been to both um, in my lifetime, but um, I love it there. My family, not so much, <laughs> but that's a remembrance for me. And then I just have a little firefly um, 
that reminds me of a Disney movie called The Good Dinosaur that I watch with Caleb and there's a lot of fireflies and he, we, we make a big deal about it and he gets so excited. So that's just something I hold dear so that's why I picked up that uh, firefly. And that's it. Um, so yes, it is a Pandora bracelet. Uh, let's see, did I tell you everything? I had, um, Caleb slept over one night last week. It was Thursday night because Friday we were ex expecting um, icy rain in the morning and then um, Rebecca might have to have left for school and to stop here to drop off K Caleb. It might have been too much. So Michael was going to drop him off and I says, why don't you let him sleep over Thursday night? And then by Friday afternoon, it should be all cleared. And sure enough, that's what, what happened. So Caleb slept over um, Thursday night. That was so much fun um, to have him all day and then in the evening. And he slept pretty well. He woke up once um, in the middle of the night, but he stayed in his crib. And we just, um, we took turns patting him down. And um, then I just sat, there's a little stool by his crib. Um, and I sat there and he, as long as he saw me, he was fine. He finally fell back to sleep and then I went back in to my bed. So that was all my excitement <laughs> for the last two weeks that you've been, um, we've been apart. So I'm going to get on with my finishes first. Okay. I had shown you this unstuffed. So I finally stuffed it. And this was a pattern from Whilst Iris Snaps. They had three bunnies as one pillow and then three carrots as another. So I put them together. And when I went to Needleworkers, I told my friend Alba, she came with me, um, I'd love to find a bunny pin, so button. So I looked in one section of buttons and I looked and looked and looked, couldn't find any rabbits at all. Actually, I was actually looking for a carrot uh, too. And I couldn't find that either. So then she, on another, um, part of the store they had some other buttons and she found this one and I think she would have bought it for herself as well but she knew I was looking for it so she let me buy it for my pillow and um, so that's my little finish on that and it's just daisies in the back and um, the next one it was a prior finish that I fully finished and that was Lizzie Kate I think it was called a little luck and I just made it into a pillow. It's some green uh, fab plaid fabric. And I put in um, beads. This came without the um, accoutrements because it was a, um, a used pattern somebody passed to me. So I had some um, little uh, Mill Hill beads that I filled in here. And on his belt buckle, I don't know if you can see that. And then I added the four leaf clover. So that's the second finish. Now I'm really excited about these. Let's see, I'll do the bigger one first. So I finished this this year, stitching it. And my husband cut down the frame. Thanks, Kim Goldman from the Contented Stitcher on her tutorial um, explaining cutting frames. And this is Once Upon a Time by the Frosted Pumpkin. And there's it fully framed. I did the framing myself, so it's not perfect, perfect, but it's good for me. And these are all the Aesop fables. So bring it in a little bit closer. I don't know if you'll be able to show you the beginning months. Oh, it has to be in an order because it's hitting the table here uh, at an angle, I mean. So. So happy that it's framed. I didn't think I was going to frame it. I thought, I said, oh, I might have to make it a wall hanging. I'll never find a frame for it, but I, I left out. Now this one, we painted it and I wanted it to strip. Okay, you can see the back, it's laced. I didn't put a cover on it yet. But this, and you can see it's kind of like purpley. It's the Haunted Mansion by the Tiny Modernist. So let me hold it back first. I just love this frame for it. What do you think? I think perfect. For me. Um, yes, I framed it myself. I laced it. You saw the back. 
and my husband puts on all the um, hardware for me. I'll show you the back. Um, he puts on these metal holders for the, to piece at the end. He had to put this in because I had purchased just the frame, probably at Hobby Lobby. Um, and we just painted over it. And those are my finishes. So now I'll just go into haul this way I can get it off the table. <laughs> Um, I have put in an order with 123 Stitch that in the last video it hadn't come in yet. So um, I got some threads that I needed, Havana, balsam fir, and dive. So just some, some different colors that I needed. Then I picked up this Lizzie Kate Needle Nick. I like him. I will. I don't know if I'll do Mrs. Santa, but I do like him, and I would like to do it as a stand-up. No, I did not finish the two Lizzie Kate's Pilgrims. They're fully finished as far as stitching, but they're not fully finished. And it comes with um, the um, basket, candy cane, some beads um, for finishing. So I got that. I also picked up this color from, this is 16 count Ada, and it's a small piece. It's a 12 by 17, and it is count, uh, 18 count Mystic, 18 count Mystic, and it's a dark blue. And I believe I saw Vicki, the Virginia stitcher, stitch something on this, and I thought it was so pretty, I says, but I didn't know if um, you know picture this plus sometimes can be very soft and um, the holes shrink and these look like really small holes so I'm thinking if I like the color and like stitching on it I might try a 16 count if I can find it and I probably it probably didn't have 16 count when I looked for it but they had 18 so I thought I'd try that then I went to Needleworkers and I picked up my pattern. So yeah, this is the front. <laughs> I'm like, is this the front? This is the pattern. This is the accompany, accompany it. Well, this was the first pattern now, actually. Um, in all things, be exceedingly diligent. And um, uh, it was called on Whipco already, but I, number one, didn't have it. And number two, it's not scheduled to start until April. So my goal, I think, was the first alphabet at the very top row to go straight across. So I should get that done by the end of the, by the end of the year. The letters go pretty quickly. So I have that, and then I got the third and fourth. Um, they're not numbered, so I guess it doesn't make a difference. This is the Russian peppermint shot by Country Cottage Needleworks. This is the Nutcracker um, series. And the fourth one is the Chinese Tea Room. So these two um, I picked up at Needleworkers that I'm on. Um, I don't know what it's called, but when they come in, put them in my folder. I'll pay for them when they <laughs> when I get there. And then I picked up um, two pieces of fabric, an ice blue 28 count Lugana and a light ash gray 28 Lugana. Then he, they, well, Jimmy um, is the dyer there, and I had wanted um, something for this mirabilia. Those are just my um, measurements of the piece that I needed. And I had to, deci we decided, we spoke about it to go with a gray background. Um, so he dyed this, he called it sterling silver slightly mottled gray. It looks like a little bit more blue in, in the picture, blue-gray. So the only thing is that in her dress, this gray might, like this is the only section that really goes against the pattern. So, and when here a little bit, and it's when I put the gray against the fabric, if it's the correct gray, 
it kind of blended, but then there's beads around it. So when I get there, I'll decide if I need a slightly darker gray. Um, it, you know, it's DMC, so I, it'll be easy to just swap that out. And then I bought, I, I, had, I was speaking with Diane. Uh, she works at Needle Workers. Um, I don't know how often, um, you know, I don't know if she, she's there daily, but she does work there. She gives classes there. And I was telling her that I was going to be stitching a Quaker Christmas and I wanted a red, but I didn't want to use um, the General Arts because I needed 115 yards and I didn't want to pay that much money. So she helped me um, pick out an anchor color instead of, they carry anchor and DMC. So it's anchor 00020 or 20. I don't know if you, they count all the zeros. I'm not too familiar with anchor. And then the other color that is in the pattern is a green. It's balsam. Oh, blue spruce. Blue spruce. So they had three skeins of blue spruce. And um, and then she said, you can use that for the fill-in, like the, the letters that are larger. And then on the letters that are just the words that are just outlined, you can use a DMC or or an anchor for outlining because there wouldn't be much variegation. So she suggested a DMC 500. So um, I came home and I pulled out my DMC 500 and I pulled out um, the blue spruce and there's really not too much of a difference. There's slight, but um, it's pretty close and I thought that was an awesome idea so but then when I came home I found the fourth skein of blue spruce but I still might do the outlining um, in the DMC 500 and this is the fabric uh, I had the fabric it's a 28 count ivory so um, so those are the two colors that would be um, and well, I told you that that's anchor 20 and Bruce, blue spruce. So those, that's my stitching hole. Oh, and then I picked up some DMC, some brights. I don't know why, but I, it was on my list that I needed it. So I picked it up and uh, when I get to the kidding pro, uh, section, I'll be able to see what that's for. I went to Hobby Lobby and um, they were having a sale on let me see if I can cut this instead. It's going to be a little loud, and I apologize. Um, they had these hearts, and they're fabric styrofoam hearts, and it was 90% off. So I paid 60 cents for a bag of hearts. And I thought, basically, these can be displayed all year round, not just on Valentine's Day because it's a heart, but because of the... Um, the fabric it can be displayed all year long so I thought that was a, a nice buy for 60 cents <laughs> then I found this at Michael's it's a little box of felted ornaments um, for uh, four leaf clovers this one says lucky And this was on sale, um, I think it was 40% off and they were originally $4.99. So I, I don't have much um, that, um, oh, sorry. St. Patty's Day um, decorations. I have a few right now, I put them here. After this video, I'll bring them downstairs along with um, these to toss around. Okay. And then at Hobby Lobby, I found these were in their spring section and they were 40% off. And I thought they were so adorable. It's like bunny garland. And for the for $12.99 and 40% off, it was a lot better than trying to make these bunnies. So I bought them. And that's all my haul.
finishes and who okay I'm gonna I hope I make you laugh okay this was my um, calendar I'm not I don't put um, stickers all over I like room to write um, so I put a few for February um, these mostly words so February and this was the ice uh, storm we had um, the night Caleb slept over into the morning and then for March, I I put in my WIPCO numbers of um, after Jesse Marie called them of 15 and 21, um, which was his eyes on the sparrow and be kind. And then I put in all my uh, projects for March Madness and I'm just watching. And then I went through my sticker book that I bought and I showed you um, a couple of videos ago for some kind of green, small, leafy that I can put on. The 17th of the month because I didn't have any shamrocks but I think this looks like marijuana I don't know so anyway um, so when I saw these at the store I decided to pick them up and add them to March but I thought that was very funny and that's the day that I'm doing my um, my update uh, floss tube after today. So today is March 1st. It's March Madness starting tonight. Well, when I start stitching today, um, I'm really excited about that. Um, it's Fat Tuesday. Tomorrow's Lent. And sometimes it's not what we give up, but what we can do for other people to be kind and things like that. So I'm going to talk about that. But um, so next I'm going to show you my WIPCO board because I um, March 1st this number was called 21 and I believe it was what was the second number that was called I guess I should look in my book 15 21 and 15 and 15 his eye is on the sparrow it's up here you know what it is my numbers are not in order so I have to look for them and um, I finished my 21, even though I, because I started it and I, I kept track of the hours. I had to do 18 hours on Be Kind. And I stitched on Be Kind this month because I also do the 24 hour acrostics every month. Um, unfortunately, I can't do March because I am only work, working on eight projects and they don't fit the, all the words down the side. So, um, so I, I won't be doing the March one, but I, I'll definitely try back to April. So the hash, they had a hashtag for one of the, um, the letters that, so what, it's the acrostic, that's what I couldn't think of. So this was the February acrostic that I printed out. And see, she has a hashtag as the first one. So the only hashtag that I am participating is and be kind, Sal. So um, I had to work on that. And then, then she had numbers. And then she had 222, what does it say? Many whips. And I think um, Jen Lee, whose idea is this, is going to be starting 222 new starts this year. So um, if anybody is interested that doesn't uh, participate in this, it's on the 24-hour um, Facebook page under files, I believe. Files or events, but I think it's files. One of those two. Okay. So what have I been working on? I picked up the plant wisdom sampler, which is this one. And my goal is to complete everything above the houses. And I'm still working on it. But all I got done, or I didn't get much done, is the center, my initials in the cartouche. And this is plant wisdom. That's the width of it. Um, I did not go all the way down yet. Actually, that's as far down as I, what you see is as far as down as I've gotten. So, there 
you go. It's all in the frame. So I had to um, figure out the lettering on in the cartouche because it had um, BK for Brenda Keys, and I had to do LS from the chart that of, of um, letters that she included. The next one I worked on. Um, so that was done on a 28 count ivory Lugana and it's stitched with all DMC all, and they're all called for DMC. The next one is Plum Street, Liberty's Welcome. And this is being stitched on a 28 count Heritage Lugana. And I did the date and the eagle. And I think I did this motif. I think the little one was in there. That was part of this sock side thing, but I think I did that. If not, then the date and the eagle. <laughs> and uh, this is gonna be a big piece. I do get to the end here. Um, and I'm trying to get down to start the, the roof of the house. So, but I am enjoying this. This is done on a 28 count, I say it? Heritage Lugana. The piece of fabric that I have here is a 32 by 38. I haven't picked this up in a while. Um, and this is the Rosewood Manor Buckleberry Sampler. And I don't think the picture does it justice, but I mean, we say that to, on a lot of patterns that once you see the, um, it's stitched, it's so beautiful. So, um, well, my goal was to complete Rows U to V, W to Z. But I realized that I didn't, this is the T here. I did not stitch the T. Uh, I finished the row, but I didn't finish the T. So I have to go back to the T, and I think I have to do the V. So let's see. Let's see where, I've, where I'm at. Yeah. I have to do the V. So this is, so I worked on where it's U and across. And I think I have one more grouping of flowers. Yes, there's another flower that goes in here. These are just the three, there's one more. So I have that and then the V and then I have to go up and do the T and then I have another row. And that's the goal for this year. Um, if I complete the ones that I want to complete, and then I have, you know, can put more things in that I want to complete. I mean, I'd love to finish this. This is so, so beautiful. Here, I'll bring it closer. Hopefully it's in the screen. Actually, um, when I did this, somebody told me I had missed a stitch. <laughs> So I'm holding it close in case you see a stitch missing, please feel free. <laughs> and that's it. I enjoy working on this. It um, It's a lot of color changes like in, in certain areas, but as long as you pay attention and take the time to do it, it, it comes out so pretty. Then, I worked on the Scottish House Sampler. And my goal on this is to stitch everything above this line of stitching here. The border, actually, and one of the center borders. So it's to finish everything and everything above. And when I'm not going to stitch the border in this, I'm going to just bring up the alphabet and then continue the rest. So 
this is an actual photograph, so that's why it's a little um, shiny. And it reflects the light. And this is stitched on, uh, let's see, the Scottish sampler, Golden Tea Lugana, 28 count. I, I stitch always two over two on 28. So I stitched, this top medallion was the flower, and I stitched the bottom of it. I added the deer or elk or whatever it is and this motif on this side. Then I went back to this side and stitched this bunny, this urn, these people, and I started the uh, bird. There's another bird facing it that goes on this side. You can see there's this is a heart. I'll hold it straight so you can see better. And this is stitched with DMC one color. What's the color number? Three three six. It's a blue three three six, and I love it. So pretty, and I love the uh, fabric. It's really nice to stitch on. Um, I catch my mistakes right away. Sometimes when you, you're you going to stab, you, instead of doing two over two, you do two over one, and then something doesn't line up right away. It's easy to um, catch. So I enjoy stitching on that. And I picked up, I guess I had three um, Brenda Keys patterns that I worked on or two. The next one is the New England Sampler, and this is stitched on a 28 count Golden Tan Lugana by Silk Weaver. And that's the picture. And I believe my goal is to stitch the how the, like the row of houses and the section here. So what I stitched this time was I finished the, I guess the orange house. Um, it was filled in halfway on this side. I had to put in the five windows and then stitch in the rest of the, and that those are two colors in there. If you, there you go, you can see it better there. And then I stitched the next house. Oh, I had to put the chimneys in. And then I stitched the next house and the sidewalk underneath the houses. So I have two more houses, and then it looks like a woman here. I don't know if that's the man, and the tree. And then I would reach my goal for this year, but like I said, I, um, I love working on these um, sampler com company patterns. So, and I love to see them finished and on my wall. So, and, oh, this is the one. <laughs> I did not get much accomplished on this at all. Um, and because it was a mystery sampler, a mystery pattern when it first came out, because it's called Mystery Mandela Number no. Three, it came out in sections. Oh, I keep trying to pull that off. Um, it, it was stitched in sections, so the pattern doesn't have the complete picture on it. So I struggle with that a little bit, but. So, so all I got done was the two out, the two borders on the outside, and this was the uh, night that um, Caleb slept over. So at eight o'clock, I think I stitched when he napped, but I didn't stitch at night because um, by eight o'clock when he went down, I was beat. <laughs> so, but I I did manage to get the two rows of this in within the two days. That's mystery. Oh, and I was pulling at a thread. That was this one here. I put this here so that I know which way is up because it's it's basically a symmetrical piece, and you know you could hold it any way. Um, but so that my stitches are all going in the right direction, I always uh, look for that. Um, 
little fat a little stitch there so I know which way to put it in my Q-snap. Okay, the last one that I worked on, which was last night, is and be kind. And the last time you saw it, it was I stitched it up to here. I started it and got up to these uh, motifs here. So I stitched the second alphabet, the house, and three motifs. Let's see if I put it. It's the lighting that's coming through. Um, and this is stitched on 28 count golden tan Lugana. Trying to see, it's called for classic color works and it's stitched with classic color works. And I don't know if you can see, there's a bird on that branch. It's, it's stitched in magnolia blossom. In, um, in real life, like I can see it, I think better than maybe you can see it on screen. And it's also in the inside of the house windows, but because it's surrounded by darker color, it's, it's easier to see. So that's my next section. And this is going to be part of my March Madness because I had finished other projects uh, and I had to include some, some other projects that I would like to complete this year. Okay, so before I get on to quilts, I have a surprise. And that's I'm doing a giveaway for my four year anniversary. And you must be 18 years of age or older in order to enter. Please do not say giveaway. I will delete your video, your comment and not include you in the giveaway. Um, please be kind. Um, it will be cut off on March 11th at 1159 p.m. So on the 12th, I'm gonna make sure that I have, in the morning, I'm gonna have everybody's name on lists because there's four giveaways and um, and then I'll do the random number generator and see who wins. And the question that I'd like you to answer is, tell me something about yourself. I want to know about you and not about stitching related. Anything you want to share. It could be funny. It could be not funny. It could be serious. But um, whatever you want to share. Now, don't forget, people might be reading what you write. So... And maybe what I'll do is when I pick a winner, I'll share something about you from what you said. So it has to be something you want to share. Now, I was thinking about this. What can I share? I can share lots of stuff, but I think the fact that I'm short, I've always wanted to be tall, but I'm short and I have really big feet for a short person. And when I tell you that my shoe size, you're going to say, yeah, you do because I'm sure taller people don't have such big feet. I wear a size eight shoe. Yep, yeah, eight. And I have to say, they've caused me many a trip, many a fall. I could be running up the stairs. Now I have stairs that go, I don't know, some, so many go this way and then there's a landing and then two more that go up here to come up into the second floor here. And I'm like, if I'm on a rush, I'm running up the stairs, I get to the top step and my shoe catches the step and I go flying into the wall. That's happened. So because of my big feet, I've fallen quite a bit. So that's something about me and the fact that I'm short and I've shrunk, <laughs> which makes it even worse. Okay, so that's, that's what I want, something that you're willing to share that I can get to know you a bit better. Um, okay, because it's all about you, because you watch me, and I want to get to know you. Okay, so the first giveaway, and we're going to just say numbers. Um, I'd like to stitch number one, number two, and this is about something about me. Okay, 
So the first one, because I've seen people stitch it, and I showed it in my last video that I already stitched it, and the pattern's in pristine condition, is in Indigo Lane by Brenda Gervais. Or Gervais. Gervais. That's number one. I don't know why, I guess I took the number off so that um, you can see the pattern better. So Indigo Lane, number one. Number two is from my real dear friend, D. She shared this pattern with me. Uh, every time she showed us um, on Zoom, I, she and Tonya were working on it. And I just thought it was the most gorgeous pattern. And, and it, the reason it means so much to me is that when I was in fifth grade in elementary school, we had a poetry contest and you had to memorize a poem. And you know, when you're young and you don't know any better to like pick a decent sized poem, I tried uh, memorizing Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I did fairly well. And then they wanted, like each class was doing this and I didn't know that. And then they were putting like their people that did the best on stage in front of the whole school auditorium. <laughs> that was not gonna be me. So, um, so I did the poem and I was chosen. And then because I didn't want to go on stage, I memorized like a five line poem on the second round before I had to go on stage. And she looked at me and I was like, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, another story about me. Um, it's Twas the Night Before Christmas. It's a Sue Hillis design. It's gorgeous, but a lot of the words are just outlined. These leaves, I don't know how many colors are in them. And they're extensively outlined. There's Krynik in this. These berries, I think there's four different berries. Yes, four different berries and one, two, three colors in each berry and they're outlined. It was like so much detail in this, and that's why it looks so beautiful. But I realized at that point, I didn't want to commit that much time to the piece. So I, get, I, you know, I gave it back to her, and she, we asked anybody in our group if they wanted to stitch it, and, um, and then nobody spoke up. So she said, use it for a giveaway. So Dee, thank you so much for this. It's a gorgeous pattern if somebody would like to take the time to do it. I'll get in a little bit closer so you can see some of the stitching in there. Absolutely gorgeous. So that's number two. Number three is an Ursula Michaels pattern. Let's do coffee. And actually I won this um, from Ardith Stitch Stitches and that's Amanda May. She's a designer and um, she was doing a giveaway of this. So I try, started it and I didn't like all that outline stitching again. So I lent it to a friend and she stitched it and she gave it back to me and nobody else in the group wanted to stitch it. So I'm giving it as a giveaway and I'm including another pattern with this one because this is mostly outlining. And that's a shepherd's bush, um, April, a year in stitches. Um, my friend Alpha gave me this one. So there's only writing by the DMC floss, like she was checking off that she had it. But the, the pattern is, is fine. There's no marks on the pattern. But the only thing is, I'll tell you, is that this umbrella is a button and it does not come with it. So I don't know if you want to order it through Shepherd's Bush or you would just design something to put there, whether it be them holding a flower or an umbrella. So these two will be number three. Put number three back on there. And number four is a frosted pumpkin once upon a time. And that's the one I showed you finished in the frame. And um, and that's it, number four. Okay, that's the end of the, oh, just wanna remind you that today is the beginning of 
March Madness. Here is my sheet. Today I'll be stitching on Christmas Garden, and that will be up against and be kind. No, <laughs> sorry, justice for all. And it's backwards on my camera, so it's hard to read. And then it goes down to the eight, that's 16 days of stitching. So I'll be back on the 17th of March. I'll have Caleb that day. So I'm gonna, depending how much I have to show you, <clears throat> I might video while he's napping, or I'll have to wait till he leaves and do it in the evening. And hopefully I can upload it that evening instead of the next day. So by the 17th or 18th, <clears throat> excuse me, I will have um, my, my eight projects stitched on and show you, and I'll decide by showing which is closer to a finish, which will move on. Okay, that's the end of the stitching section. I'm gonna talk about a little bit about quilting. So if you're leaving me now, I just want to um, It's hard um, with the war that's going on over in the Ukraine and Russia. I actually, it's happening in Ukraine. I am very upset about it. Um, it's hard for me to be happy, but um, I watched Luda. She is a floss tuber. If you haven't watched her, she works on a lot of dimension gold kits and dimension kits, and her stitching is absolutely gorgeous. She lives in the Ukraine right now, um, and she did a short video, like six minutes or something, of what it's like in the streets. She was out in her in front of her house, I guess, and she, they were talking about going to the bomb shelter at night, and. She's hoping that they don't bomb the buildings. And then she took a little bit of pictures from her apartment window and showed the buildings, how gorgeous, the architect and everything of it. So um, I just continue to pray for peace and hope that not too many lives are lost and they come to some kind of agreement where Russia will pull back. But we don't know how that's going to go. So with that, if you don't want to see any quilting, Thank you for being with me this long. I love talking with you and sharing with you. And tell me something about you. Alrighty, so a little bit of quilting. What have I done? So I pulled out some previous quilts, just two that I've done. And then I'll show you the uh, Magic 4 patch where I've gotten to. Okay, this, um, I, I did not come up with this design. I uh, watched Cre Cre Create TV, and there's a show on there called Quilting Arts, and there was an artist that, um, and these are just cut pieces that showed this, how to do this. So you, I drew a picture of a rabbit, and then um, I just got cut pieces of it, and they're raw edge. So you just cut it and you stitch right on top of it. And it's on black, it was a, supposed to be black um, wool or black felt, I used um, a black sweater that I had that was wool and I threw it in the wash in hot, hot water and threw it in the dryer and then I just cut a piece from it and it, so that it doesn't fray. Um, and then I stitched it onto this fabric. And But if you look at the fabric, I, I don't know how I do these things sometimes. Like I don't know if I can do it now. I stitched every leaf and stem on that. like. I put batting behind it and I just started stitching. I don't know if you can see that well, but yeah. So I named her Penelope Rose because I just like that name. And then I was at a Mancuso quilt show and there were vendors there and there was a pattern, I think it was called Think Spring. And so I just, this is a long one, so I have to stand up. I've shown this in previous, but because I have so many new viewers, I wanted to just share it with you. So it's a, a basket bag with flowers and um, brick rack as the vine. And then this is all button stitched, but I did it on the machine. 
And then I just free motion quilted it. A dragonfly in there, some more leaves. I guess this was a time when I was really um, free motion quilting a lot, where like now I would have to like, oh boy, I really have to practice. I've been out of it so long. Oh, a little piece of lint from the table. And then, um, and then the star. So that's an oldie but goodie. And then this is the uh, Magic 4 patch that I worked on. It, you saw it in, in um, little blocks the last time, so I sashed it and I finished the top. And that's it. So now I just have to put a backing, a batting, and quilt it. But that's it as far as show, show and tell and quilting. But what I did was I watched Nell, who is Little Yellow House Quilts, and she showed some placemats that she started, well, maybe a year ago, I think she said, and she just finished them. And she, she says, oh, I did a tutorial on how to do this. So I must have missed it. And so I went back into her um, videos and I found it, and I think it was around 54. And I watched the video of how she did her placemats. And I said, oh, that would be nice. And she says, oh, I got the fabric at Walmart. So Walmart's not too far away. So yesterday I decided to go to Walmart. I don't know, you know, like even Java Girl Stitches, she mentioned she buys things at Walmart. Priscilla from Priscilla and Chelsea, they buy stuff at I never find what they find at Walmart, not in my Walmarts. Um, so they, um, Nell had said she found some fabric and she showed it and she made these placemats. They did not have anything that near of what I would want to stitch for a placemat. So I said, okay, Joanne's is not too far from here. I'm gonna go to Joanne's. I go to Joanne's and I found I found one jelly roll that could be barbecue. So I said, oh, this would be nice when um, either in the house in the summer or out in the backyard. And I only found one, one um, roll of it. And it only had, I think, 20 instead of the 40. But it was, it was on clearance, so I looked for another one, but it wasn't there. Anyway. I bought it, I brought it home, I bought the backing fabrics, and hopefully in the next video, I'll have at least one completed, but I'm hoping to have more than one. So um, we'll see how that goes. And then I'll go back and maybe um, lay this quilt out on the batting and backing and start quilting it. But I do, I'm planning on two more other frame pieces um, out of my box of finishes to have show, to show for to show you the next time we're together. So I'm trying to. I love being busy. I'd rather be busy than idle. So I love doing this. I'm hoping you enjoy seeing it. Um, if you can, if you're a praying person, please pray for peace. And until next time, love you guys. Take care. Bye.